Hey everybody, I'm Rebecca from Thieving Otter Farm. And I'm Leah with Southern Biophiliac Urban Farm. And we are Two Chicks Caternix, bringing you the scoop. Not the poop. On Caternix Quail. Well, we had a lot of interest in our genetics videos, a lot of good feedback on our Pharaoh uh, video and genetics for dummies. So if you haven't seen those, make sure you go watch, um, especially the quail genetics for dummies. This, that might be a, a great show to watch before this one, because we're going to be talking about a little bit of sciencey stuff that was covered in that show. Um, but today... We're going to be talking about EB. So EB is short for extended brown. So here's some of the sciencey stuff. And like Rebecca said, um, it's good to watch uh, Genetics for Dummies um, if you haven't watched that one yet. But um, EB uh, is on the locus E. And the gene is MC1R. The mode of inheritance is autosomal incomplete dominance. What that means is even if you have one copy of the gene, you can see it. Now, EB also shares the same locus with sparkly German pansy and possibly cardoon, which is still being studied. So what is EB? What is EB? EB is a gene that changes the color and the pattern of pharaoh. If you have one copy of the gene, that's called heterozygous, and one copy of the EB gene, the name for that is Rosetta. If you have two copies of the EB gene, it's called Tibetan. So EB adds shades of brown to pharaoh. And here you can see some different photos. So with that one copy of EB, you see the middle picture, which is Rosetta. And two copies gives you Tibetan. So with Rosetta, you're going to have light feather shafts. That's the big thing that you're gonna look for when trying to decide if you have Rosetta or Tibetan. You'll have light feather shafts with Rosetta. The legs and feet may be dark, but usually not quite as dark as with a Tibetan. And they also tend to have a black beak. With homozygous Tibetan, you're, you're not going to see those light feather shafts. They're going to be dark. They will also have that black beak and their legs will be much darker. So EB chicks tend to be brown. Um, Rosetta will have stripes where Tibetan won't. EB can naturally have white around the beak, breast, and wingtips. It's natural variation with the EB gene. Some people get this confused thinking that the bird carries dotted white when in fact it does not. Leah, let's talk about um, what fawn enhanced EB means. This is something that is often seen in like the genetics Facebook groups. Um, people will uh, say, what is my bird? And some people will say that is a fawn enhanced EB. So let's, let's talk about what that means. So with fawn enhancement, um, you're going to see those uh, light colored feather shafts, but they're going to be much more prominent than if a bird was not carrying fawn. Yeah, and and what what's happening here is you have a gene combination. You have the fawn gene and the EB gene on the same bird at the same time. But because EB is, is kind of um, super dark and kind of overpowering, not a whole lot of that fawn gene is able to show through. So like Leah says, you have um, a brightening of the feather shafts. They're even more apparent than they normally would be, say, you know, and this is on Rosetta. Um, and you also see um, some horizontal striping that you wouldn't necessarily see um, if, if it didn't have the fawn. 
Um, and sometimes this is called Y enhanced EB uh, because fawn and calico are on the Y locus and um, calico can look very similar when combined uh, with EB. So it can, it, it's hard to tell is, is a bird fawn EB or um, calico EB. So some people just say it's Y enhanced. Well, it's time for discussion. Why can't you have sparkly Tibetan, Rebecca? So back to that sciencey stuff that we talked about in the beginning about locus and how uh, EB is on the same locus as sparkly. It's also the, on the same locus as pansy and possibly that new gene that we were talking about, cardoon. Well, when you have a locus, if you were to watch our um, genetics for dummies episode, I talk about how you can have a train and there's a train car and you can only have two seats side by side. So you can, you know, Leah and I can sit next to each other, but we can't have two Rebecca's and two Leah's in the seats at the same time. There's not enough room for us. <laughs> that would be fun though. It'd be a, it'd be a little party, but so the locus um, for uh, these genes um, only have two seats. And so you can only have one copy of Sparkly and one copy of EB or one copy of EB and one copy of Pansy. Um, but you can't have two copies of EB, which is called Tibetan, at the same time you have Sparkly. So let's talk about some common gene combinations with EB. Some gene combinations have specific names while others do not. So Rosetta plus Rue is called Scarlet. They will have light feather shafts and that red coloring. Tibetan and Rue is called Range and they have dark feather shafts with the red coloring. Now let's talk about brow fee. When you have the EB gene plus the fee gene, you have grau fee. And grau fee can be either rosetta or Tibetan, or it can be heterozygous or homozygous fee. The fee gene removes shades of orange and brown. And so you end up, uh, if you have one copy of the gene, you still have a little bit of brown left. But if you have two copies of the fee gene, it tends to be a black and white bird. Now, EB plus blue, you can have um, that Tibetan with that blue overlay and heterozygous. And in homozygous blue, the bird is going to look almost completely white. And I should probably add here, um, I didn't have any good pictures of Rosetta with blue, but you can have Rosetta with blue as well. I just used Tibetan because that's what I had available. So you can also have EB in silver and EB with Andalusian. Um, one of the big things with Andalusian that you look for, if you see the bird on the right, it's got one feather that is um, the normal Tibetan coloring. Um, that is how Andalusians look. You'll have one or more feathers that um, are not diluted like the rest of the bird. Now, these um, show EB with the dotted white gene. And generally, these are called tuxedos. So the one on the left, EB with the dotted white, is a Tibetan tuxedo. And then on the right, we have EB dotted white with rue. So that would be your range tuxedo. And you can have EB with two copies of dotted white. That would be an English white EB. Um, but uh, again, I didn't have any pictures of those. It would be a solid white bird with uh, potentially a spot on the head and or a spot on the back. And that spot would be the EB coloring. Okay, so now if you want to get really crazy and throw a whole bunch of genes together, we can talk about black. <laughs> so <laughs> up until now, we've been talking about like two gene combinations. Now we're going to talk about a whole bunch. All right. So the recipe for black 
is EB and specifically Tibetan. So Tibetan plus Fawn, specifically two copies of Fawn, which would be Manchurian. Fee, and here we go again, two copies of Fee plus Merle, which is a relatively newly discovered gene um, that makes the bird black. It's, it's what darkens the bird. And then you're going to do, a, we're, we've been, been doing all this addition. Now we're going to do so, some subtraction and take away SLB, which is sex link brown. And um, that's what you what you have to put together to get black. So it's um, quite the genetic combination there. So for more information on all the sciencey stuff, be sure to go back and watch our quail genetics for dummies. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining in and be sure to support our content by liking, sharing and subscribing. It really does go a long way to help us and to help you. As always, we're going to, we are going to do a coupon code this week. It's going to be EB15. It's good for this entire week. And if you're listening in um, and want to see all the photographs of this, uh, go ahead and check out us on YouTube. And also, if you're not already following our Facebook page, it's a great place for you to post questions. Have a great night. Bye.